Hi everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zerscher and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite threads. These are not going to be in any like the first one, the second one, I can't do that because these are my go-to. I could probably, I was going to say pare it down to like my top five, but I'm going to go with my top 10. And these are threads that I have always threaded up on a needle, ready to go. And I use them in every project I work on. So I'm going to turn you around and let's get started. Okay, so I've pulled a whole bunch of my top 10 favorite threads and I've got them here in no particular order. And I'll just start with what I have right in front of me, which is Steph Francis's texture selection. And what I love about these this thread is that it's five different threads all in one skein. And what I do is I have these, they're not expensive, these sort of, these cardboard bobbins. And I'll put the um, link for these where you can get them. They're cheap. You can get, I get just whole packs of them at a time. And I take these skeins, I unwrap them, unknot them, and then I just wrap them all together. I don't separate the threads out. I just wrap them all together. I take the label and I peel it off and I put it on here. And then when I want a particular thread, I can undo it. And what you get is you get something that's like a shiny thread. You get a viscous ribbon, which is this. You get a cotton chenille, which is this. You get a metallic, which is this. Uh, this is a, a, pearl, a pearl cotton. And I just love this. Now, if you have one thread that you just really love and don't use the others, I tend to use all of them, although less of the um, chenille and viscous ribbon, although I do love using them too. I just don't use them quite as much. But if there's one of these that you really love, then you can order that one by itself on their website. It's a great way to just kind of start out and see what you think. It comes in all their fabulous different colors. So I use those a lot and they come to you like this. Aren't they gorgeous? The next thing along Steph Francis, the line of what Steph Francis carries is something called thick mercerized cotton. It's basically an eight weight um, cotton thread Again, I wrap it on these things, I peel the label off, and I use this all the time. The next one is the silk texture selection. And again, it's one of those great things to purchase if you're not sure what you want to get. It has five different uh, threads in it. They're all silk, so you get a silk chenille. You get, and again, I wrap them up in this. You get a silk chenille, you get a silk boucle, which is kind of fabulous. You get a um, the spun silk with flames. It goes from a, uh, it's like from a, an eight weight to even a 12 weight to almost a five weight. It, it just varies. It has little nubs in it. It's lovely. And then it has this other one that I just love. I think I've used it all. Oh, here. That is a three weight silk. But this is a really, really lovely thread to, to play with. I love the five and the three weight of the silk pearl. The, they're Steph Francis's pearl uh, cotton, which comes in a three weight, a five weight, and an eight weight. And these, I just, are my kind of go-to pearl cottons. I use these constantly. Um, I probably use the five more than any of them, but the five and then certainly the eight and the three, I will thread up as well and use. I've been using them consistently with this last piece that I've been working on, and I'll show you the thread. I'll show you. I'll point them out when I, when I pull that piece out. That's Steph Francis. 
All their products are fantastic. Okay. And but then we have the thread gatherer, which has oriental linen. Now, she is out of the th oriental linen right now and is getting a, a big supply in and will be dying up a whole bunch. And once that is readily available, I'll send, um, I'll do a whole thing on it. I'll do a video about it because her oriental linen is unlike anything I've ever seen anywhere. Nobody does an oriental linen like this where you get this kind of heathered effect. Um, and it's just really, really stitches up beautifully but I just love um, the Oriental Linen from the Thread Gatherer. And then, also from the Thread Gatherer, is Aurora. It has a little metallic to it. It's got a little pile to it. There's sort of some, uh, f like a little fuzz to it. It is silk, mohair, and nylon. And I love this thread. It's fantastic for turkey work. It comes in a whole assortment of different beautiful colors. And um, yeah, so Aurora, love Aurora. Also from the Thread Gatherer is her Silk Pearl. I do the number five weight. Um, that's the one I use more than any other. Beautiful colors. I use these all the time, love them. The Silk Pearl from the Thread Gatherer. She used to call it Silk and Pearl. These are older skeins. Now on her website, it seems to be just called Silk Pearl 5, just so you're not confused. And then the last one from the Thread Gatherer, although also she has other things, they're all fabulous, but this is Sheep Silk. I love this stuff. It's a eight weight, but it has, it's just lovely to stitch with. And I use it a lot. It's got more of a matte finish to it than a than a shiny, and it's fantastic. And then this is a soft cotton. It's painter's thread, but the company is Tentaculum. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's soft cotton. And it comes, it used to come like this, and now it's being sold like this, which is actually a little trickier for me to store, but you get more yardage. Um, I Again, I put these on my cards, and I, I just love painters. It's a number three weight. I always, I like the soft cotton. They have a shinier one that I think is called... Pearl Cotton Number no. Three, maybe, and it's got a, a sheen to it. I love the mat, um, and I, it, it's great with the linens that I use. So those are my top ten. Now, if I could squeeze in one more, it would be the spun silk with flames from Steph Francis. It's just a really, really, and that actually is in the silk texture selection. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful thread. I'm gonna show you now how I use these threads on a pieces that I'm working on. This button I did in a oriental linen with a pearl cotton. I put the two together on a needle and then I um, wrapped it. This is also oriental linen. These little starbursts here. These, these are also, this is all oriental linen. Here are the little French knots in oriental linen. And what I love about it is that you, you get this different, and here it is with turkey work. This is um, shepherd silk, which is another thread that I love from the Thread Gatherer. I don't use it quite as much for some reason. I'm not sure why. It's, it's a beautiful thread. It's a three weight. These are French knots and turkey work with the oriental linen. This is boucle, the silk boucle from the texture selection, and I wrapped a ring with it. And um, I love this boucle. It is not easy to stitch with, I'm just saying. I couched it here. And it kind of gives this look of a almost like a palestrina knot. So that is the uh, 
soap boucle. Here is, this is from the texture selection, the silk texture selection, that three weight silk that I love there and here and here to get the bark down. That's all using that um, from the Steph Francis silk texture, so the silk texture selection. For the thick mercerized cotton, this is using, this is a trellis stitch using the thick mercerized cotton. I did some cut work here and little French knots. I did some seed stitch here and so as is this also doing french knots and seed stitch here's the mercerized cotton doing uh, drizzle stitches and a feather stitch in here then the aurora i used for this i made these buttonhole wheels and then did seed stitch in aurora and tons of French knots in the Aurora. It's a beautiful thread, and I really love using it. This is also Aurora here. Here I did a seed stitch in the Aurora. This is also using Aurora here. Aurora is also really fun to do a uh, do turkey work with. It does works that up beautifully. For the silk pearl, thread gatherer silk pearl number five weight over here. This is all seed stitch using the silk pearl. Here I used the a five weight pearl cotton from Steph Francis. I, I use it all the time. So I used it all here. I used it in here to make these cast on boyons. I used it for doing some little straight stitching and I used different weights of it here for these buttonhole wheels. I've used it for all these bouillon tendrils. This was the uh, from the silk selection, that three weight silk from Steph Francis and I wrapped these guys in it. This is Painter's Thread, the soft cotton, and I just love how that stitches up. It's just so beautiful. So here, I did this here, this running stitch, that's all in, that's Grandma Moses, that's all in the Painter's Thread, as is all of this, all this seed stitch in here. This is the um, Steph Francis silk with flames that I really, I just love that. And this is a, a crested chain that I did. This is the viscous ribbon, by the way, that I, from that selection, as is, this is one of the metallics from the selection, that, that texture selection. The sheep silk is this, all of this over here. And this is also the sheep silk here. This is the um, thread gather silk pearl five weight. So here's my Aurora. It's threaded up on a Milner's. And so I'm going to do a couple wrap stitches just because it is on a Milner's. Sometimes I'll thread up a sti uh, uh, I'll thread up a needle, a Milner's, just so that I have the ability to do either a wrap or a non-wrap stitch but if I have it on a chenille it's going to be really hard for me to do a wrap stitch and when I don't know often I will just do it on a Milner's and that way I can do either one. So let me just do a little French knot here so you can see the Aurora and I'll do a little I'll do a little cluster right here. And you can see that it's applied thread. With that little bit of silk and a little bit of metallic.
This thread is great for doing little starbursts. It's great for wrapping, um, you know, doing a chain stitch and then wrapping it for these organic shapes. It does beautifully for that. I use that, uh, I use the Aurora quite a bit for both my scissor case. So here's the Aurora. Here it is doing bullion circles. There it is wrapping. And this is the Oriental Linen doing these little starbursts. But you can do all, it, you treat it like you would any other thread. I mean, it, it does, it can be a little bit trickier only because it's, because it does have, it does have a couple of different threads. And so it can, it, it can be a little trickier because you have this one thread here. And then you have this other with the metallic running through it here. I don't, I don't find that it's problematic. I, I, I just love the look of it. And you get this little bit of sparkle, which I think is so much fun. So there it is for that. And then of course, if you want to do something like a little seed stitch in here with it, that's fabulous. And so if I want to do a little, a little tuft here of turkey work, I'm going to keep the turkey work pretty um, short. I'm not going to make it very long. If you haven't done turkey work, I did a video on it really recently to kind of take some of the mystery out of turkey work. A lot of people were saying that they had trouble with it and often it's because people can, um, it can feel a little confusing when you're reading uh, how to do it through a, an instruction book. But the truth is with turkey work, it's very simple. You make a loop and you anchor the loop. You make a loop, you anchor the loop. It's nothing more than that. It can be completely erratic and random. It doesn't have to go in rows the way it's often shown. It, um, it, it just doesn't. I mean, you don't have to worry about any of that. You just have to make a little loop and then you have to make sure that your next stitch is anchoring that loop. And that's it. That's all turkey work is. It's a loop that's anchored and it can go anywhere. It can be utterly ha haphazard. It definitely does not have to go in little neat rows. So as you can see, I'm making a loop and then I'm anchoring it. Okay, so that's enough for to just show you what the Aurora will look like as turkey work. So you just cut your loops. I'll put that video in the upper right corner of this video so you can see it too. It'll be slowed down and I take more time with it than I am right now. And so I did a, just a few and I'm just gonna kinda cut these off so they're not all kinda straggly. And then I'm gonna get out my bunka brush or a cat brush um you know it doesn't have to be this it can be you know whatever you use for your pet if you have a pet it just has to have metal teeth and you want to be sort of gentle someone said that they ripped theirs apart and it may have just been too vigorously done you know you just sort of gently brush it and it 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 just makes it really fuzzy. So there we go. A little bit of turkey work. I'm going to cut this so that it's even shorter. What you want to do is you want to make sure that your loop is tall enough so that you can trim it down. If it's not tall enough, then there's not much you can do. But if it's tall enough, you can always then trim it. 
Um, I'm keep trimming this a little bit. Okay. So there it is. That's kind of fun, right? Okay, so that's the Aurora. This is my sheep silk. And for this one, you know, I've done a lot of these little starbursts, but you can also do um, little French knots with them, which I've also done. So I'll, I'll just show you. I like to use lots of different threads. So I, I typically have, let's see, what do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, about 20 needles that I've got all threaded up. And then I just grab one and I have them all in the colors that I, that I know I'm working on. And it just, it just kind of takes some of the pressure off, you know, cause there it is, it's already done. It's already threaded. Like right now I'm doing these little French knots in the sheep silk and it's on a chenille, which, you know, would be better if it was on a Milner's, but that's okay. But you can see how it's just really, really pretty. And it's a lovely little addition to some of these other bolder sort of showy color, you know, threads. It's, it's just a really nice, simple thread. Um, and it's a nice weight thread. And so now I can kind of fill in with some little seed stitches if I feel like it. And I don't need to think too much about this. When I'm working with a, a, a lighter weight thread, I tend to keep the stitches smaller, heavier weight thread, I can go bigger. Not always, but but kind of as a general rule. Okay. Someone was asking, what do you do with your scraps of thread? I don't know. I never have scraps. I just, I mean, I just do French knots or seed stitches or something random. Um... I typically keep anything that's more than a couple inches. Oh, this is also using the Silk Pearl number five weight from the Thread Gatherer. So I think this gives you an idea of of just, you know, what I use and what I, what I love. And these are definitely my go-to threads. It doesn't mean that there aren't plenty of beautiful and wonderful threads out there. We're really lucky that we have so many threads at, our, at hand that we can use. It's just that these are the threads that I tend to use more than any other. This, by the way, is the thick mercerized cotton doing a cast on bouillon as well as those little starbursts among the oriental linen ones. So I hope this was helpful and maybe you saw some some threads that you like to use. And until next time, let's keep stitching together.